are built for success presented by Ram Trucks. You got Oklahoma and Texas State Come Fairgrounds in a great state of Texas in the Cotton Bowl. It smells like deep fried food everywhere. This thing was 49 nothing a year ago. This series, by the way, since 1955. You ready for this? It is 33, 33, and 3. Ooh. Since 1955. Really? Who was president? At 1955, Eisenhower. Somebody, oh, he's guessing. You're guessing. You're guessing. Nailed it. No, I knew. Okay, okay. <laughs> Wait, time out. Not for nothing, because uh, we all spent time there in, in tech. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. played there. Yeah. Um, the Texas State Fair is incredible. It's awesome. This year, I saw on the menu, they are offering up a deep fried fireball shot. That's right. I don't know how that even happens. It's liquid. No, you put it, no, no, no. You how put it. You, they, they, you dough everything up. Yeah. So it's inside dough. You yeah. dough it and you fry it. And the shot glass is. is, is I think. Yeah. I think it's going to be like a jalapeno popper of Fireball. That's, that's America, baby. <laughs> hey, that's America. When I went to the Texas State Fair that one year, yeah. I was like, I'm going to have a heart attack. Yeah, but that's the point. It. it was worth it. That's why you go. It was beautiful. That and the football game, which Ots, you know well. Yeah. Come What's on, this man. game like for someone who's played in it? it it's it. It le there are levels to this game. As a freshman, you don't understand the magnitude of this game. You see juniors and seniors, right? Oh, but there's your boy, Sam Macho. There you go. Hey. Hey. Go down. Hey. Let's hey. go. Hey. On yeah, cue. Yeah, 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 right on cue. So okay. tell us why Oklahoma's going to win. Why do you wear a tight out. end number, by the way? Uh, well, they gave me that number. Yeah. And you see the muscles poking out. Yeah, so no, we see that, bro. So y'all need to chill out. I'm not smiling as much as I used to. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, I wore that number because that was a number I was – oh, great question. In high school – Thank you. I played tight end. So my freshman year I played, so y'all don't know Matt Berry was a linebacker. Middle linebacker used to have a lot of muscles. Now they're gone, but they'll come back soon. Maybe. I'm, I'm more ripped than I am. I yeah. Need, okay. I see the so high school, my freshman year I <laughs> played defensive tackle. My sophomore year I played uh, offense and defense, right? So I played tight end. I needed an eligible number. And so yeah. I switched from 71 to 81. And so 81 was my high school number, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year because I needed to catch passes. Yeah. I went to a football camp at USC. In my junior year, back when, you know, it was uh, Pete Carroll and Reggie Bush and Matt Leinert, they just won back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Campus just went to a third one. Show Lindell White some love? No, nah, I mean, like, he, he, he was there, too. He was there, too. Right? He was in <laughs> Lindell White's a monster, if you're listening, because I know you got some stories about OBJ. And anyway, long story short, go to that camp. I get discovered. ended up going to Texas. And I was just – that was the number they gave me. I chose and still and I And I wanted to make it my own, right? I wanted yeah. to, like, act, yeah. give that number some kind of, like, pizzazz, some yeah. kind of, like, something. And in a game like this, like – you want to make your mark on the game. That's right. what a game like this means. And which quarterback is going to make their mark Saturday? Dylan Gabriel is a monster. He's great. Specifically in the red zone. What he does with his arm is great. This is a fast-paced, high-tempo offense. But Gabriel in the red zone uses his legs. He's efficient. This could be the game where Quinn Ewers takes it to the next level. Oh, yeah. Jordan Reed, uh, NFL scout, Wright Collins, NFL scout, was talking about NFL scouts have been waiting to watch this game yeah. for Quinn. He's only played one complete game. That was Alabama. Now you have a defense that is coming to hit you in the yep. mouth. Billy Bowman at safety, monster. Gentry Williams at corner number nine, monster. Got another dude, this Desan McCullough. He's like a hybrid linebacker slash safety, monster. 6'5", 220. His dad played in the league. Like, these are some dogs. On defense, you haven't played this necessarily all the way when you have Kansas or Wyoming. You have dogs at every level. And so, will Texas and Quinn Ewers be able to take a hit in the mouth over and over mm -hmm. and over again? Because that's what this game is all about. That OU defense is physical. Yeah. Brett Venables, one of the best defenses in the nation right now, is going to be interesting. It's not often that we talk about Oklahoma having a stout defense because yeah. it's usually like, yo, listen, they're going to win the shootout, and that's how they've made their hay. So, who's – yeah. Both coaches, whether it be Brent Venables or Sark on the other sideline, who, 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 who needs this one more? Yeah. I think that Sark needs it more. Agreed. Okay, good. And the reason why is that Sark's been there for a couple years, uh -huh. right? He's going on year four, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, Sark, you need, like, okay, year one, two, kind of get a pass, right? Last year, have that huge win. Yes, both teams are going to the SEC, but you have a leg up, a year up. You have a year in advance to show what you are. Also, you're, a not, you're the third-ranked team in college football. You should be uh, you should be the favorite. And so you beat Alabama already. You get an Oklahoma, ranked Oklahoma win. Now all of a sudden you've solidified your spot. Should be at least in the college football playoff conversation. Venables just got there. Last year was year one. The whole thing was a mess. Now he's got some new transfers in. I believe he has another year to get things going. I think, sure, Oklahoma could win this year. But next year's year, you say, hey, Brett, we need you to step these I, I'm up. with you, too. Sark's got a playoff team this year right now, and he knows it. Having said that, this could be the first of two meetings between the two teams yeah. in a round-robin type situation, Big 12. Who wins this Saturday version? 
I'm going with Texas. Um, back to back, but it ain't gonna be like last year. Last year, 49 zero. This year, <laughs> better not. I think. I think, better not yeah, be. I think. I think it'll be the resilience. Like I got a chance to speak to the team and spend time with the team in the off season. And there are so many sayings that Sark has on his walls and around the facility. And one of them, it talks about the idea of like, get used to get used to being the bully. Like, accept that. Like, like get used to having that target on your back. Earlier in the last couple of years, this team hasn't been ready for that. They win a game, they get down. They lose a game, they're miserable. Now it's like, nah, man, we expected to beat Alabama. That's what they were saying. They, they're expecting to beat Oklahoma. And so they will, it will be physical, it will be bully ball, but I think this team will be able to overcome it this year. You've been around the team this season. Do they think they're a CFP team? Absolutely, yeah. You have to be arrogant. Yeah, they, yeah. you have to be uh, bingo. You have to be arrogant. It, yeah, and people talk about quarterbacks as athletic arrogance, right? You say, Mahomes has athletic arrogance. It's a good football team. There, there is a level of confidence or maybe arrogance or swagger or bravado that you have to have, and that's what both of these teams have. We can talk Texas all we want. OU has the same same. Mix. And as you know very well, back in the Mac Brown era, there was no team more confident and arrogant in their standing in college football than Texas. Hope we get them back there. Sam Alto, good stuff. Uh, we're going to go to the fax machine, the cell phone, and the rotary conference call. Give me something fun. 